Welcome into Oilers TV playoffs presented by Sport Check. Chris Westcott alongside 630 Cheds Reed Wilkins to break down game six in San Jose Oilers versus Sharks. Now, Reed, uh, tonight the game is in San Jose, but this arena will be full. The Orange Crush watch party has been sold out. So, uh, Maybe there's something on the line tonight. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Uh, the, the excitement in the city is in, incredible. I know it's been fun for Rob Brown and I all year, and especially into the playoffs, talking to fans after game, after games. I was just walking into the arena, and just a random person I passed just looked at me and said, Go Oilers! Well, that's just the, <laughs> the vibe in the city that just strangers will uh, pass on good wishes for the team to one another. So, no, it's, it's pretty cool. It, it's a chance for the Oilers to – to, to close it out, it's it's another in what's been a long line of tests and steps throughout the season. You know, they kind of missed an opportunity to uh, take control of the series in Game 4, but now a chance to put it away this evening. Well, we'll talk more about exactly uh, what the Oilers need to do to beat the Sharks, but first let's go to Tom Gazzola at the SAP Center for an update. Guys, after a thrilling come-from-behind victory in Game 5, the Oilers return to San Jose with an opportunity to close out this series. Of course, should that happen, Edmonton will need to be much better than they were Tuesday night and forget everything that happened here in this building in Game 4. Now, the Sharks come into this one with their backs against the wall. The defending Western Conference champions will come out with their best effort of the series. That's what Tom McClellan's group is expecting. Another note to pass along your way, Every player on the roster for the Oilers was on the ice this morning for a quick and efficient 20-minute practice. The best way to describe the mood around the team right now is business-like. Chris, Reed, back to you. Thanks a lot, Tom. So, uh, Reed, business-like approach for the Oilers. Very business-like was David DeHarnay in Game 5 in the face-off dot, 70%. The whole team was 59%. Todd McClellan said at the SAP Center this morning that face-offs are key to puck possession and the success of the Oilers. Do you agree with that? And, and how do they fine-tune that? Because not much practice time in the playoffs either. Well, and Leon Dreisettel had a huge game in the dot as well in, in Game 5. He was uh, 15 out of 19. It, it's interesting with face-offs because – the Oilers have been one of the worst teams in the league all season long. So I kind of look at it where I, I don't suddenly expect them to improve and jump up to a 55, 60% team, but they do need a way to at least keep it, keep it even. I mean, there was another game in this series where San Jose had a slight edge 22, 20. Okay. You can get away with that, but you know, there's been games where San Jose has been in the high 50%. So I think the Oilers at, at least need to make it a saw off in the face off circle. If, if they can't have an advantage and it's also key, you know, what happens on those scrambled draws, you got to have the wingers get in there and, and provide support and, and try to free up the puck as well. But yeah, I mean, and, and Peter DeBoer joked the other day about the, their face-offs mm -hmm. being good in the series. And he said, well, we were bad in the regular season, but we're playing one of the four teams that was worse than us. Right. So, <laughs> so, so, but, but it is a, a key part of the game. I, I look for the Oilers to at least kind of be around even and then take it from there. So when you win face-offs, you have the puck more, which means you have more offense. Science, folks. Let's hear from the uh, room uh, at the SAP Center uh, and Todd McClellan. You know, they're going to come out flying the first 10 minutes, so we got to match it and, you know, find ways to, you know, do what we did in overtime in the third period. You know, we were relentless and getting pucks deep, throwing pucks to the pads and, you know, getting on our forecheck and winning our puck battle. So we just got to find ways to do that. So we won't talk about closing them out. We'll talk about starting. We'll talk about things that we need to do well, and they have to happen from minute one. Uh, through minute 60. They can't appear at minute 11, 12, or 13 because it could be too late. Uh, like I talked about, the fourth win is always the toughest one to get. And, uh, you know, we put ourselves in a position to, to be up in the series going into a game like this. So you want to do what you can to, to bring your best game and, and make the most of, of, uh, of that position that I was just talking about. So, uh, like I said, we know they're going to bring their best. And, and if we want to come out winners tonight, we got to bring our best. So, uh, we learned our lesson, I think, in Game Four, and then in being comfortable with the with the series lead. So hopefully, uh, we don't have to learn another lesson tonight. I think all all too often, it goes back to Maddie's question a little bit: is those top two lines kind of uh, uh, neutralize each other, and your third and your fourth lines tend to rise or fall uh, to the occasion. We were lucky enough to get ours performing um, in Game Five, and we need that here in Game Six. 
Uh, you heard it there, Reed, from the SAP Center. Uh, first chance uh, to clinch the series for the Oilers. Big test. You alluded to it earlier in our open. But uh, what I find interesting is Milan Lucic there. He says they learned a lesson from their 7 nothing wallop right. that you can't be comfortable with a series lead. What Oilers team do we expect to see tonight? Well, I, I think we'll know in the first five or ten minutes. I, I mean, I hope it's the team that plays with energy and composure because I think those have been two key things for the Oilers this season. If they come out, and it's not necessarily about dominating the first ten minutes, which they have been able to do a couple times in this series, but playing strong, getting, getting to pucks, staying in puck battles, and letting San Jose know, okay, this is going to be a difficult night. You know, we, we know that we got a chance to clinch. We know what happened in this building last time, and it's not going to happen again. So I, I look for the Oilers to get out there, try to get on the body and get engaged in puck battles, keep pucks alive, because uh, the Oilers have been a, a pretty good team in the second half of games throughout the season. I mean, they've, they've been a pretty good third-period team. They've had some comebacks. They had a dramatic comeback here a couple of nights ago. And, and I think if they can you know, prolong the length of time that the game is tied or within a goal either way, they stand a really good chance because, because then I think they can keep rolling their four lines and get after the Sharks as they go into the third period. Again, like we saw two nights ago. So, But, you know, the, the, the start, as, as always, is so crucial. You don't want to fall behind. You don't want to give San Jose an early lead and get that crowd going, uh, you know, in their favor and have that big tidal wave like we saw in but game four. But not just the starts because we always talk about them being a good 10-minute team to open the game, obviously, but when you score against them, they've got the experience and the drive that they come back at you for the next 10 minutes. You have to weather that, right? Well, sure, and I think that comes down to the composure element in, in that the Oilers, and they, they've talked about a belief system, and to me what that means is the Oilers know how they have to play to be successful. They, they have ways to manage the other team's forecheck. They have ways to break out the puck. They have ways to get their own forecheck going. And they have to trust those things, even if the game isn't always going in their favor. They, and when they do trust them, they're usually able to get momentum back, limit the other team's opportunities, and work their way back into the game. And they said that after the Game 5 comeback, that they stuck with their belief system, right? And that is, okay, they were down a goal going to the third. They didn't, oh, my God, we have to tie it in the first four or five minutes or we're never going to tie it. They just stuck with it, stayed in the game, and were able to tie it late in the third period. So I just think for the Oilers, you know, manage the start and let San Jose know we're not going away until the final buzzer and I think they'll they'll be in the game down right down to the end. Well the Oilers looking for a much better result than the last time they went to San Jose and it's their first chance to clinch this series tonight. That'll do it for part one of Oilers TV playoffs presented by Sportcheck. Stay tuned for part two as Reed and I break down the Sharks. Welcome back to part two of Oilers TV playoffs presented by Sportcheck. Chris Westcott alongside Reed Wilkins to break down the Sharks now. Reed, uh, you might disagree with me, but I think it was almost better that if the Oilers were going to lose the way they did uh, last time they were in San Jose, it's better to do it in game four, come back, have the home game, than it would have been to lose maybe, say, in overtime and not learn those lessons. Now the Sharks have lost in overtime, and they've got to go back to their home building and win two. Well, that, that's the big debate, right, is how much of one game carries over to the next. Most teams will tell you momentum doesn't carry over from game to game, and, and maybe it was better for the Oilers just to get skunked rather than have a, a heartbreaker that they felt slipped away in game four, like happened to San Jose. I, I think from, from a Sharks' point of view, I, they were clearly a little too passive in the third period. Now, they were you know, less than three minutes away from closing it out, but they didn't generate a lot of offense, and then they didn't really do anything in overtime. It was all Oilers. But I think if you're San Jose going back for this game, you look at the way your goaltender played in Game 5, and if I were the Sharks, I'd be thinking, like, man, our goalie stood on his head to give us a chance to win that game because Martin Jones was excellent. Obviously, the save on Nugent Hopkins and the save on McDavid in overtime really stand out as two of the best saves of the entire series. So I think the Sharks are thinking, man, we, we just need to spend a little more time in the Oilers' end because we got a goaltender back there that's pretty hot right now. So when you have a goaltender like that, and the Oilers have Cam Talbot as well, it gives you confidence going into any situation, even if you're coming off a demoralizing or heartbreaking loss. But let's hear from the Sharks at the SAP Center from this morning. It's two good teams. I mean, they're a very good hockey team. We're a very good hockey team. And I mean, I think everyone expected the series to be tight from the get-go, and it has been. Um, you know, obviously, 
uh, last game we, we had a 3-1 lead. We would have liked to, to win that hockey game, but, uh, you know, they they came back and uh, they played a, a great third in, in overtime, and uh, it's our turn to respond to them. Uh, I thought we played well for 60 minutes. Um, both teams played well. Both teams had chances, so we'll uh, feed off of... Uh, the 60 minutes that we played well. I think that's just the way that, that the game goes at times. You're going to be, um, you know, playing from behind and playing in your own end, and it's how, how you handle those, you know, how you handle that adversity and, um, you know, who plays the, the, the best for the, the longer extended period of time will, you know, most likely have the best outcome. So uh, for us to have that full game at home will be good. Uh, no, it's different. There's no doubt. There's no hiding from that. Uh, you know, you lose, you go home. But uh, we've been here before. I mean, you know, this is a team that played. 25, 26 playoff games last year. I think we had at least two or three elimination games. So we've been here before. We know how to handle it, and I think we're confident we're going to show up with a real good game here tonight. That last clip there was uh, head coach Peter DeBoer. He talked about the experience of this club. They've been there before. So heading in uh, to a game where you face elimination, if you're the Sharks, you have to be a little bit more confident than some other clubs. The Sharks are an interesting team because last year they got to the Stanley Cup final. Finally, after having several excellent or very good regular seasons before that, a couple of times in the Western Conference Final, and then other years where a lot of people felt they, they should have been able to advance further, but they lost it in the first or second round. A lot of guys on the current Sharks were on both editions of those teams, both the, the Stanley Cup finalist team and the teams that were considered disappointments. So, yes, they, they do have a lot of experience playing in big games. They do have a lot of experience playing in elimination games. You know, last year they, they got through a game seven against Nashville to keep going in the playoffs. So, yes, I, I do think their experience is a factor, but, I mean, the less experienced team also has the lead in the series, right? There, there's always a time when a Which team, team with less experience... Which team would you rather be, right? Because I'd sooner, yeah, I'd sooner be the team with the 3-2 with the lead. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I totally credit the Sharks experience I, I, I acknowledge it that it's important but I've also been saying throughout the series I don't think experience is the absolute trump card when it comes down to what's going to decide this this series in this game and we've seen uh, the teams that was labeled coming in as the inexperienced team show up big in a big game at home in the last game so and to dominate overtime against the more experienced yeah, exactly. team so so it doesn't really matter I mean it, it can but it might not factor in and, and, and it's been a crazy series in that there's been four of the five games have been close on the scoreboard. Really, only one game has been close in terms of tight for 60 minutes and in sort of an even number of chances, and that was the Oilers' one nothing win in Game 3. They, they have sort of taken turns uh, really dominating each other or having a wide edge in shots and territory. So that's that's been kind of unusual how it's how it's uh, played out to this point, even though they're, they're only a game apart. So, But I would expect this game to be a lot more like game three than any other game in the series when we might see tonight possibly both teams at their best then because they've been flip-flopping like you said yeah but would you expect that tonight this is like an elimination game for the sharks and it's their first chance the oilers to clinch it would you expect that yeah, maybe I tonight is that first I, game I, I think so I, I i think it will be like that i, I don't think there's going to be a lot of chances to go around the the orders quickly learn the lesson from from game four and and the sharks are feeling the effects of hardly having the puck for the final 38 minutes of, they're, of, they're, of the, of the they're last gonna game. They're going to come out fast. So, so I, 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 yeah, I don't think there's going to be a lot of room out there, and I don't, I don't think there'll be a lot of scoring chances. Well, Rita, uh, how can fans listen to you tonight? On 6.30, Chad, we'll have the face-off show at 6. Rob Brown and I will have overtime open line right after the game. All right, thanks a lot for joining us, Reed. All right, that's Reed Wilkins. I'm Chris Westcott. Stay tuned after the game for live post-game coverage on Oilers TV. You've been watching Oilers TV Playoffs, presented by SportCheck.